Hello everyone, my name is Michael Cummings. I'm the sales manager for National Geographic Learning. Some of you may know me, some of you may remember me. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I very much miss coming over to Ireland and uh, visiting the schools and visiting family and uh, holidaying there. Just an excuse to leave the house really. Um, I very much hope um, that you and uh, your families have, uh, have, have not been too affected by um, recent events of the pandemic. And uh, I'm here today uh, to talk to, uh, uh, to Peter and hopefully uh, give you some insight as to what we've been doing to try and support schools and, 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 and survive. Thanks, Michael, for agreeing to take part. Um, can I start by asking what the overall approach has been in response to, to the uh, pandemic at National Geographic Learning? Well, um, National Geographic Learning's had the same experience as everyone. I think it's been constantly evolving our response in terms of uh, our expectations um, for what would be working normal operating conditions. But if I would sort of hark back all the way to, to April, the first thing was really engagement with schools and trying to support them um, in able to access materials and access materials that could be delivered in, in a multi-mode scenario. Um, they, you know, adaptive, synchronous and asynchronous published content um, is incredibly useful. It's particularly useful, um, it appears, uh, in an online context. So one of the first things we did was, uh, was, was essentially try to ensure that we had um, visibility of our portfolio of digital content, e-books, presentation tools, um, online workbooks, they all came to the fore as, as useful um, modes of accessing, modes of delivery for, for students to, to, to access uh, the content that they'd usually have perhaps in print form in their classroom um, when they were uh, doing their courses uh, over video conferencing. What two or three resources would you suggest uh, from, uh, from National Geographic Learning that would be useful to schools or teachers or students at present uh, teaching in this kind of scenario? Uh, at this point, I may be, um, uh, I don't want to try and teach people um, to suck eggs. Uh, I, think, I think most of you will know that the most useful things that you can access are probably, firstly, the presentation tools for uh, course book series. Um, if you're using that, um, they're incredibly useful and while not optimized for uh, sharing over video conferencing, they're absolutely brilliant for that express purpose. You, you, you know, you can share screens, you can give students control, um, and they're interactive, and they 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 offer a perfect structure for uh, students to lead students through um, through a class. Um, in addition to that, obviously the ebook would reflect that. Most of us read poor or have a high level of functionality or and, and and I think that seems to be a demand um, from our customer um, which is very important um, I've already mentioned these but but yeah and then again the online workbook um, which allows for you know more blended um, approaches um, it allows for students to work autonomously um, it can be tailored towards uh, you know students that uh, well they're a captive audience for a start so um they're, they're perhaps a little bit more motivated and they, they have time uh, more time to engage with that particular um uh, form of work um I'm, I'm, without wittering too much i think one of the one of the key things that we probably produced is is the support network that we i know that every single publisher has has over a period of time developed and that support network is built around webinars that are recorded that specifically try in bite-sized digestible forms to, to, to help um, teachers understand better how they can utilize not just our um, you know, digital assets or components that we publish, but, but all of the breadth of, of, of digital uh, online um, resources that, that support teaching uh, students in a blended or online context, or if you want to introduce that even to the classroom. Um, so 
we, we've done that with webinars. We've got a large selection of webinars on our landing site and in focus blogs that uh, that built around um, trying to help teachers and institutions understand um, how better to deliver classes under the restraints of, of, of the pandemic. Where's the best place for uh, teachers to look for updated information and uh, about your materials and activities? Well, um, I understand you're going to be sharing this, um, but I, I mean, I will do, give you a quick example um, of, of this very thing. Um, just bear with me one moment. Sorry for the pause, but you'll all be, all be used to that. Here we go. Um, so you can visit the landing page, which is um, very simply eltngl.com, and you'll see four navigatable simple tabs. Um, the In Focus blog, which has lots of resources that are free and available. Uh, and and in these include uh, ready to go classes um, and uh, um, what's the word? Lesson plans is the word I'm looking for. Um, I don't know why I was reaching for that. Webinars, as, as, as I've stated, I won't click the link, but please feel free to explore. There is a breadth of, of, of support on there for teaching everything from adults to academic to young learners. But I know that predominantly this is an adult market and, and we have huge amounts of support on there. And then in addition to that, we've got uh, an overview of the digital resources that, resources that I've referred to um, and, and how you can best access those um, and also request from me and, um, and my colleagues, uh, you know, material directly. Uh, one of the things that's been uh, very important throughout this has been is, is to make sure that things are readily available and can be delivered to, to people and are economically viable in a time when things are very, very difficult. Um, these are all things that we've, we've, we've tailored our, our, our our catalogue of, of content to. Um, we have one of the things that we, we've focused on most is, is trying to give as much flexibility to our customers as they as, as they require. And when that, we've done that by learning from our customers. So we have flexible bundles of uh, of all of our content, which can be you know, basically tailored to whatever need and whatever way you and your school are teaching. And, and, and that's been a really good thing. It means that when you come to us, you don't feel like you have to, um, you have to settle for a specific prescribed program. You're able to, to a large degree, build your own. Um, and without, I, no, everyone, everyone who does know me knows that I'm not in any way concise. So I, I'll just I'll let this run on. But one, one thing that we, we're probably most proud of, I'm going to answer my own question, <laughs> crowbarring in. But the thing that I'm probably most proud of and NGL's most proud of has been we've worked with our customers, a number of customers that we've been with us for a long time. Um, and we've been extremely grateful for um, all of you um, that have, have worked with us. And we've, we've had a few opportunities to essentially customize our programs and work and collaborate with customers on bespoke programs. And this has included um, what you would expect in this sort of scenario, which is some, some really quite sophisticated uh, transitions of learning ecosystems into the online or virtual space. Um, so we've done a lot of complex and granular learning technology integrations into platforms. Um, and within that, we've also built in our online workbook and allowed by licensing our content for customers to actually develop their own, uh, their own assets, which match some of the syllabus specifically that they've done. Um, uh, and we've done that in ebooks, in print form, like on the LMS itself as a, as, as a, as a direct uh, direct access LMS that, that the customers built, but with um, with the support of, uh, of utilizing our our content and, and 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 that has been probably one of the most rewarding things, um, as well as incredibly complicated and uh, a very steep learning curve. Great. Can I then ask uh, 
my final question there, which is why are you supporting the ELT Ireland conference this year? Um, well, it's an interesting question. Which part of that part would you like me to break down, Peter? Um, this <laughs> year part? Um, well, we're supporting it this year because as long as we're around, we're going to support ELT Ireland. I mean, this is uh, very important to me um, and very important to NGL. Um, the entire, probably everything, is going to seem a little bit more meaningful when we get back to normal conditions or, or something close to that, um, whatever the permanence of COVID's influences. Um, but uh, but we've always tried to support ELT Island and we've always tried to support the uh, the market as best we can with the resources we have available. Um, ELT Island has been an excellent conference for, for us and it's represented the schools of Ireland extremely well. Um, it's also been very enjoyable. I miss um, the beer part particularly. That's that's probably the most crucial part of the entire event. But um, but overall, they've they've always been excellent, and uh, um, we will we want to support you guys. And uh, this is a great way for us to 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 still access um, the the Irish language schools and the teachers, um, and who are working very hard still. Um, in very difficult circumstance. So, you know, for, for us, it's a no-brainer. Of course, we're going to support ELT Island. Great. And we appreciate the support. Um, my, my bonus question at the end is, like, we had to, all of us have to consider what are our values and what's really important, uh, what's our mission, uh, and, and examine everything that we've been taking for granted and doing as a matter of routine. Is that something that you also feel that you had to, uh, had to do as a result of this? Well, I think for one of the things with working for National Geographic Learning is that um, more and more so we recognised firstly prior to COVID that, that our mission really should reflect the sort of values that you would expect of National Geographic Learning. So one of them you know, would be, you know, what is, what is our footprint, what is our environmental impact and how can we reflect and, and showcase exactly how our how we work um, is actually sustainable as much as possible and, and aligns with 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 the sort of environmental concerns that that is shared you know across the industry but way beyond so that was being that was all being done before covid um, covid hasn't changed our values um, our, our, our core values in any sense you know, we still want to bring the classroom, the world to, to the classroom and probably it's, it's actually become, yeah, a, a little bit more uh, apt given the fact that there's so many restrictions to doing so. So that is essentially what our material always did. Our material is about creating global citizens. It's about um, 21st century skills is, is one component that I know all publishers incorporate, but, but certainly for us, it's about representation, it's about being modern, it's about being relevant, um, it's about the hoover in the background that you may or may not be able to hear, um, but um, I, I think that we, we probably become more important in that sense than ever, because what we do, or what we attempt to do, is is give the student the ability to experience the world 